All right, welcome. It's the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 3rd of May. And uh, Kristen, thanks for joining us in the, the dark hours of your night. <laughs> so agenda topics to propose. Um, why our Sudakar had sent me a, an email proposal of an outline for a possible a project to work on Jenkins on Kubernetes, basically taking the Google mm -hmm. season of docs ideas and starting on them. And so I wanted to spend some time today talking about that. Uh, even if uh, Sudakar is not here, let's talk about it anyway, just to get your insights on where should the kind, these kinds of information be put, et cetera. Then I put a placeholder in for JCASC for Diraj uh, she Code Africa, I think Meg, you and I should probably talk through, and Kristen, we should talk through what that was. Oh, I've got a, and I've got the retrospective scheduled, a retrospective poll has been sent. Uh, please respond. So that's for everybody to respond to, right? Right. The idea is we would really like a, a well, one final, we've got some really great retrospective comments already, and I'll like, well, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Contributor Summit as well, new to next topic. Any other topics you'd like to be included? I'm good, that should keep us busy. Okay. Yeah, I don't have much. <laughs> so, so Kristen, the one that I think is, is would be most powerful for us to discuss with you here is the Jenkins on Kubernetes topic. So one of the things that Sudakar suggested was hey, let's include some additional Kubernetes concepts in the installing Jenkins on Kubernetes, deeper intro to the Helm charts. And then the, the big one was use the plugin installation manager. And this is uh, updating plugins with plugin installation manager and managing um, plugin updates as code, right? Pull requests, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Does that seem reasonable to you? I, I, I love plugin installation manager. I know we're using it in Jenkins infra now. Mm -hmm. Any reason not to put this into standard documentation? Well, no, especially if it gets more people using it and kind of maybe make sure that's up to date for people who have questions about it. So I think that would be a good addition. Okay, so, and in terms of looking at where it might go, so placement of things is oftentimes a puzzle for me. So we've, today we've got installing Jenkins and the Kubernetes page, and it's got Helm, YAML, Jenkins operator. Would we envision well, it? Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. Like, it, would this be more general or would it be like very hyper-focused to... That, that's what I'm wondering is should plugin installation manager be outside of installing because it applies both to Kubernetes and to Docker. So maybe it's, it's in managing or in system administration. I'm open to, I'm not clear on which of those, but it feels like maybe it should be a whole separate dedicated chapter on plugin installation manager. Right. Which it could be referenced from here. Yeah. But uh now, what about here? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, go Kristen. for it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> no, no. I was going to change the subject. So continue. Oh, okay. Because I was like, cause, yeah, because then we could reference to it, to it from like each of these different things. Because each of these different installations of Jenkins, if it's written generically enough, um, probably the only thing that's very specific is going to be like the plugin directory location. And then we can make sure that that's, I mean, that, that's like always the Jenkins home, but maybe <laughs> some examples or like screenshots of like where everything is located can be done specifically for Kubernetes or for any other system. Um, but I think it's generic enough that it could maybe underneath managing Jenkins, because I saw a script. The okay, script so let's, there. well, and, and managing Jenkins has things about agents yeah, and about scripting and about users. So it seems, now what the sys sysadmin is more about sort of the hardware you're on. Yeah, so so for me, it feels like managing Jenkins is a good home for it. Okay, good. So I'm going to put I'm going to put a proposal into the notes then with the idea that um, as a chapter under managing Jenkins. 
it actually has a section on managing plugins. Oh, in managing Jenkins. Oh, yes, it does. Right. Oh. Okay. So it can, well, well so does, we does I mean, we need that, but then, you know, is the next one, and then we can say now there's a cooler way you can do this or. Well, or is it just a part of this? Or is it just a part of that? Yeah. Yeah. We get excited by a new feature and want to go out and write a separate book about it, but. And, but the reality is, yeah, so it's, I think you're right. So extend the managing plugins page. Okay, that one, that one feels really good because now conceptually we've got installing a plugin, updating a plugin, removing a plugin, pin plugins, and then a new section, plugin installation manager. Um, okay. Quick, now in Jenkins, can they manage plugins through CAS, through JCAS also? They cannot. Oh, well, look well, they joined they, us, perfect they, timing. Hello, Diraj. They, they can manage them through it, but what they do is, well, they can, but I, I guess I would call it an anti-pattern. It's using JCASC to do the, ins, the, the copy of plugins gives you a very brittle installation. You wanna have them already inside your Docker image before JCASC oh, okay. gets started. Okay, so, so I, would, I would think it would be nice if that section made a mention. It shouldn't, I mean, the JCASC documentation would be separate, but just, because if, if you're doing this stuff, you're going to hear about that. And just the question, say you can do and just what you said. And I loved, I just, I have to talk to you about the word brittle. I just got pinged on it. I'm right. so happy to hear you use it. Um, right. Okay, good. So then, then, then we've got installing Jenkins on Kubernetes agreed using plugin installation manager into the plugin managing plugins page. Now the, his next proposal was using configuration as code. And now we're back to, I would love to have configuration as code. Where do we put it? Does it belong in system administration because of its, its ability to configure things all the way up? So is it closer to reverse proxy config and monitoring and backup and restore? Or is it closer to tool management, plugin management and time zones? I would argue for the system administration one because I think it's very similar. I think it could kind of be very similar to backup or store. Wait a minute, oh. so it on the previous page, there was a, conf I saw configuring oh. the system over on the left, right? Yeah, Number two. there's that, empty. Ah, lovely. But but this could, this could conceivably be a place where we put configuration as code as the first entry on this page. Now, Kristen, your your sense was because it's it's closer to a backup and restore concept. Yeah, that that's kind of where it's like maybe I think it's really close to that that kind of concept in general. Unfortunately, there's not a, there's nothing there. But, well, but, 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 it's, we, but to me, it's it's a it's the entire system's configuration, and it's almost like creating a backup, but in a code way rather than. <laughs> Well, and, and okay, to further support your, your, we've got sections for Chef and Puppet incomplete, but we've got them there. Those are similarly how you get the system configured. So it, I think this makes sense to me. Let's call it for system, system admin. Meg, are you okay with that? I'm, yeah. All of this stuff is circular and it needs just yeah. needs cross references, you know. <laughs> right, it, 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 it's it the is. the nature of the beast. Very right, ex exactly. Insert as an as a new new page new section or no new page in system administration good okay all right Okay, and then, then the, the final topic was the Kubernetes solutions page and the solutions pages are here. And this is a case we don't even have a Kubernetes solution page yet. So we've got Java, we've got Python, but nothing for Kubernetes. So this has been one, absolutely. It's, it just goes in there. The content that 
he was suggesting included Helm chart use cases. And this one, I was curious, Meg, you and I have had discussions in the past about how do we describe all the ways we use agents? And this is a, a sort of a classic example of it. Okay, ephemeral agents in the same cluster, ephemeral agents borrowing capacity from a different cluster or static agents outside the cluster as in, let's see, somebody's Raspberry Pi or an Android phone or an iPhone or a Mac. Right. Or FreeBSD. I mean, there are all sorts of use cases where you need static agents outside a cluster. Are those, are any of those things that we'd say, oh no, we should actually embed those into some other part of the documentation, something. You know, Would I ever to, want static agents inside the cluster? You really can't. Well, Kristen, can you have static agents inside a cluster? I guess you can. I just don't know why you would, because the Kubernetes elasticity is the thing. Mm -hmm. I guess, okay, what we all know that I know just enough about anything to be real dangerous. Um, but there, oh shoot, what is the name of that feature? Um, there is the feature where you can make your, force your whole pipeline to run on the same agent. You mean the reuse, reuse node? Um, sequential stages. Ah, okay. And that would be, I, I don't completely understand any of it. So I'm just looking at dots that look like maybe they connect. And just a question, it may be, the answer may be shut up, Meg. <laughs> That's a good answer, Kristen, often. <laughs> I'm sitting here going like, um, I'm going to say, need to get back into Jenkins, a lot more back into Jenkins. <laughs> but as well, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stuff, so. yeah, and so, so Meg, I guess my question was, okay, we've got, we've got a page, page now on managing nodes or managing agents. What we don't have though is any concept of ephemeral agents and static agents that's been presented in the documentation. Ah. And, and, and that was one that, that that lack of that conceptual gap right now seems like a great thing to put inside managing nodes. But then the question is, okay, link to managing nodes or, or in managing nodes And the same for the, the agents, static agents as well. For me, I think that really belongs in the managing nodes thing. Probably, yeah. <coughs> um, also, is there uh, something about shared versus dedicated nodes agents? And, and that concept is unique to, to CloudBees solutions. So that's not on the that's that won't be on the Jenkins the Jenkins site. Oh, okay, okay. A good question. Thanks for asking. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Without yeah, okay. Oi. All right. So well, so back to where we were then. So any any other insights to offer on the Jenkins on Kubernetes outline? For me, that's sufficient. I think we're ready to talk about Jenkins configuration as code with Diraj. Yeah, I think so. I have one quick question. I don't know if we need to go into it, but something that I see is it might be nice to end that section with a tour of managing Jenkins that just has notes about these tasks you're going to do. Oh. You know, for, this is going to be like backup, I'm thinking, is going to be quite different on Kubernetes than it would be on a traditional, you know, and if we don't we don't necessarily want to rewrite that. But say, you know, or unless it's something that it's just totally different, don't ever do this the way it is. And if you're on Kubernetes, you've got to do it completely. Um, That's really good. cool. So just like as a high level overview, like these are the specific gotchas or. Right, sort of the, I, I, 
I like a little avuncular piece. Don't rewrite everything. <laughs> Assume that I know it or I can click to it, but right. say it's just like that, except for this. Oh, or okay. you can also do this or be sure you use this directory of your own, you know, or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Just because yeah. uh, yeah, they're all pretty close, but there's a couple little gotchas probably all over the place. So. Right. And then I'll shut up and we go on to Jcask. <laughs> good. All right. Okay. That's. Yeah, I, okay, good. Due to Kubernetes. So Diraj, thanks for joining us. Um, I put the topic on the list of plugin, J Jcask plugin documentation on the theory that you might join us and, and want to have, ask some questions or share with us what you've learned, etc. Did you want to take some time today? Hello. 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 Hi, thank you. So yes, last time when we discussed, so you told me with the help of a demo that how we can extract it, the configuration from the UI. So that was very helpful. And uh, so last time I pointed out that we need to have a developer documentation. So that is one thing that we can discuss about right now. Other than that, I don't think there's uh, anything specific because that was the main concern. Like having a developer documentation for JCAS would be a really great thing for new contributors. Yes. And so, specifically, when you're when you're describing developer documentation for JCAS, this is things like how to make my plugin able to use JCAS. Is that the kind of thing that you're? You're envisioning there. Share with us further on the kinds of things you'd see in developer documentation. Would it be, I want to add some new feature to JCASC, or is it rather I want my plugin to support JCASC? I think, first of all, how to use JCASC uh, with my Jenkins instance, and uh, how do my plugin uses jcask uh, that would be good thing as well and then how can i contribute to jcask uh, that would be third thing for interested people who want to contribute and uh, yes, i think these are major thing i i can think as of now Good. Okay. And so that, that first one, using configuration, using configuration as code, um, seems like an, a good one that we cover it, we would like to cover in the Jenkins on Kubernetes work. So yeah, agreed. So see Jenkins on Kubernetes project. So that's a good one. And that's, that's focused focused on on users so at least is did i understand you correctly when you said using jcask in my instance that's me as a jenkins administrator how can i best use configuration as code to help my life be better and easier yes exactly yes. okay and then and so this is focused on administrators on jenkins administrators then adapting my plugin to support JCAS, that's focused on plugin, plugin maintainers? Yes. Okay. And then contributing to JCAS development focused on JCAS maintainers. Good. Okay. And and now I was I thought we had at least the contributing to JCAS. And uh, now I, I haven't done the, the details to prove that it's there, but I thought that we had in docs here contributing that would tell people, okay, this is how you can help with how you can run it, configure it in your IDE. Okay, so. And then 
Is there more in the docs directory? Oh yes, plugins. So this was, and, and again, this is, there could be all sorts of interesting challenges here. Okay, so the plugin, to, And I know we don't have anything on using JCASC in a Jenkins instance, at least not in the Jenkins.io documentation set. Good, all right. Does anybody else have a desire for a reference page for especially Jenkins or especially the uh, YAML file, the what Jenkins.yaml file? Oh, oh, you, you, un, you do great. understand that you're, oh, go ahead, Kristen. Oh, no, no, I was like, that would be great. <laughs> Oh, oh, you are, I, I love that optimism. Kristen, I was thinking- you must come more often. I like this, two <laughs> against one. Oh, no. I was like, oh yeah, sure, let's do reference. Let's do a reference file. See, see, my challenge with that one is what you just described, Meg, is this <laughs> page. Well, no, it's this page. I'm gonna show you the page that it mirrors. Let's see, it is, what you just described is this page. Oh, before, right. yeah, before, uh, but for yeah. configuration as code, right? Yeah. Because isn't yeah. each plugin can contribute, each plugin can contribute YAML snippets to the configuration. That's right. And therefore, it would mean the same systematic thing of, oh, here are here are the YAML fragment references for, for all the plugins that have support and. I think it's doable, right? Kristen, Kristen's proven it when she wrote this tool originally, that you certainly can iterate over all the plugins and extract based on their class structure, extract documentation from them. The, cause well, the problem that I've seen in my limited exposure to um, Cask and Jcask, but is that we don't have complete documentation about the configuration either. Whatever we have about the configuration is at the GUI. And it says, you know, are you having a nice day today? Somewhere in the background, that is translated to something called Hudson.curious.nosy about your status. <laughs> or, and, and I don't know what the valid values are. I mean, we kind of, we all relied, it was all in the background that the UI would keep you from doing something really stupid and dead. And, and it's just, you know, the, for the first time somebody demonstrated this to me, they went through all the screens on the configuration that I'd seen a hundred times and it all looked fine. And then they opened up this file and there's all, now granted a certain amount of it I can figure out, but I don't know what is, you know, what are legitimate values? What will the system prevent me from putting in as a bad value, um, et cetera. Yeah, and I think what you're what you're describing is the reality that we 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 rely very nicely on view configuration <coughs> to tell me the the setup of my current configuration and to give me a valid configuration. So it in fact knows this is how I define a JDK installation, and it looks like that, and I can copy and paste that right into my configuration file. But that, for me, that's that's similar to the the pipeline yeah. syntax snippet generator. Oh, go ahead, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would agree. I was like, this kind of looks almost the same. I love this page. Maybe <laughs> being able to see the configuration, but yeah, maybe right. it's yeah, maybe that needs to be documented. I hadn't seen that before, but but still, are are they all? I don't know if all the values in there are just obvious as to what the values should be. Oh, certainly not. Right. The the trick there is. If I want to do something, I, I have to configure Jenkins and then export it. So if I say, "Ooh, I want, I want to ex, I want to change my JDK configuration," I, or here, let's let's do the the one that is very familiar to me. We're going to change the Git configuration. And so I go in here and I I make changes. Okay, I'm gonna. It's now going to be Git two is the program that, and that will now be saved. The next, when I click save here, that thing will then appear as a change and I can go grab it out of the, out of that saved file. Mm -hmm. 
but but you've got a good point that we don't have we don't have a YAML based configuration as code equivalent to the pipeline steps reference. Yeah. If that would be something worth adding, maybe we can make a task, or you know, just make a a like a docs ticket for it. Right. Maybe look at that as. Well, even to know, I think there are still things that you can configure on the UI that is do not that uh, Jcast does not handle, right? Correct, like all the plugin stuff yeah. like Mark was talking about. Right. Just to know that that is a whole situation that you need to do separately in new, better ways are hopefully <laughs> coming. And I, I suspect that users for the, the plugins that are in the suggested use that the users may not always think about those as plugins that are separate from Jenkins itself. Some of those real basic ones. Yeah. And, and that are always there. Okay. But I don't know. I'm just, I spent Good. too many years writing Unix man pages. So, <laughs> but you didn't put a file in the system without a man page that documented every field on it. Right, exactly. Anything else on, on Jake, any other JCAS plugin documentation topics? How is it going, Dira? Is it fun? Is it interesting? Yes, everything is very interesting. What okay. All right, then next topic proposal was She Code Africa Contributhon. So Meg, anything you want to share there? I've certainly got a, a topic or two around retrospective. I'd like to hear that, yeah. I, was a, I think it was a great project. I hope we do it again. Yeah, let me drag in the notes because we've got some notes. Actually, it may be worth here just getting some gathering some more discussion on because we've got you and me and Kristen here. Yes. Maybe let's talk retrospective one more time. Kristen, you were you were in the Friday session though, weren't you? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we've I oh well but here here again here's a chance for us to look one more time. So we what we did during the Friday session, we asked each of the the those attending. So Onyinye Esther and Cynthia, each of the three attended and we asked them specific questions. Hey, what could we do to reduce technical problems? What could we, what could, were there hardware issues that, or equipment issues that have caused you a problem? What did you learn from other documentation that you would have liked to have known in advance? Uh, what's next? Those kind of things. Do we have, this is a nice list. Do we have like a list of, I don't know, top the top five things that if we did this again, we would change? No, that's what the retrospective will do, right? So oh, okay. we've, we've got a proposal to do a retrospective and and this was just trying to gather data for it. Gotcha. Oleg has okay. started a section here in this document on retrospective. So here it was, okay, everybody give your comments what went well and what were the problems you encountered as a contributor, as a mentor, and what should we do differently, right? What should we improve? Right. Now I'm, I'm happy to add more text here. If, if Meg, if you would like to give comments or Kristen, you're welcome to do them here. I can type for you. I think I only put one comment in and I think it was a question. Maybe oh, good. Okay. Be. So, but, but you have seen this section and. and right. I, well, you, I thought, I mean, you, everything oh, else yes. that everybody else had said was good. I yeah, frankly, go. my frankly, I'm not going to put it in writing, but I think the, for, the second Monday meeting was worthless. Thanks to me. Um, but, <laughs> um, but. Okay. Oh, do we have on the maybe? Well, we could turn that in. That we we need to ju we do not just throw them in the middle of the lake and see if they can swim. That we ought to start out with 
have the have them do the classes, a couple of classes, or maybe we present. Um, yeah, and I think that was um, self-paced training course links was here. Yes. Yes. So so that's a good one. Absolutely. And then for us now, I mean, we could have, should we have at the beginning started out and said, okay, you're for, we should have sent benchmarks too, or milestones that sort of right. we expect this to happen. So so we weren't there in the second week. Um, Onyinya had submitted 20 PRs and a couple of the others were still reading the documentation you know, that they have some way to pace and that we have a point sure. to know, okay, you're in trouble here. Um, but then should we say, so this week, and then maybe you go through and demo it, the steps that they have to do so they get to watch it, record it, and they've got that. Ah, oh, hadn't I, and I don't think that comment came in. That's a good one to add here. It was sort of talked so, about in the end. Should just, I mean, and there's two ways. One of it is that maybe we want to learn, want them to learn that in open source, you get some rough instructions and you go out and you figure it out. Um, and we're very, you know, and call for help if you do if it doesn't work but but they're young this is all new you know i think most of them were new to devops and to jenkins a bunch of them were new to java there was so much stuff um that it might have helped if they'd seen you know this is what you're going to do first and then we would have had and the big one that we should have hit then is when they got to the point of adding new information is how do you research this um Okay, and, and now tell me more about that one. So um, guidance on how to how to research a a topic. Is that what you're saying? How to right, research? Right. What is what is this argument to this step mean? Um, and I think I think some of the best stuff came from googling and finding stuff on Stack Overflow. Um, oh, should we make sure that the plugin developers themselves the for the plugins that we've selected are on board because yes. that would also they that would be sort of the number one they should be able to just say oh you know what is this supposed to be and what kind of a string do you or whatever um yeah and but, that that comment we had we had in advance but or we've had that one other time but good to have it right have it again absolutely but so they can they could ask they should review the code and see what they can figure out from the code i get the feeling that People don't very often add comments that are useful, right? And as a writer, I love admin or developers who put copious comments in their code, but they're few and far between. Yeah. So look at the code, look for comments, talk to the pipeline owner or maintainer or the plugin maintainer, and Google out there and see what you find in other blogs and Stackflow and stuff. Um, okay. and, or post to Gitter. I don't, I don't know what priority, what we want them all to do, but but I think, you know, they all hit that wall and it's like, okay, I'm ready to do this. Uh, right, good, okay. Kristen, you've been silent. What do you, what do you think um, was, where were, oh, do we have the more social to work more on building a team out of this group too? We, we at least had a suggestion from Cynthia to do icebreakers, to do uh -huh. introductory segments, to get to know each other. Right. I mean, another thing that I wonder is if we should give them, like the first week is getting set up and getting everything. Maybe we should have a second week where they work in pairs. I don't know if they would like that. Mm. That I mean, some, some of these plug gaps, like a lot of these are big enough that the two of them could work on it together if they would like. Would they like that? I don't know. Yeah, I think maybe so. So actually, this is kind of so. These were mostly like college students. I or, think so. Yeah. Okay, because like that could also help target it too. Um, because I think we may have treated them a little bit more like older, like they've maybe been more of a professional right. status right. versus like more of a student status. And, and I mean, I mean that more from the idea of like oh, okay go out and discover versus very much a like hey like let's get onboarded um quickly or like or like a little bit more of a hand-holding onboarding process because i i did i like me personally being the mentor i think um i you know it's, it's hard to remember sometimes how it is like to join open like 
join communities and you know speak or talk on channels it's really intimidating at first it um, is yeah it's, it's very very intimidating especially if you are coming in as you know a student you're like oh my gosh these people have so many so much more experience like what if i come in and say something that you know may, may not be right oh, i'm embarrassed and it's just i mean like we don't care you know we're all like yeah like come on in and join and talk uh, but it just having that reinforcement um and just maybe a little bit more personal encouragement might encourage them or you know personal encouragement might allow them to speak earlier in the process and i feel like in the second week i, I kind of was you know hey no one's really saying anything <laughs> i don't know what's going on yeah i had <laughs> the feeling about the second week that almost everybody was in trouble and yeah everybody it, was scared to say anything right and then in the third week you guys started having man mentoring sessions mm -hmm. and then that was oh those then and ev then things right started. i i wish it had been two months actually right i agree i agree Mac. that was sort of it felt like we're just starting to get going and um it's <laughs> just with those like oh so yeah. we have those sessions a little bit earlier and also um just kind of maybe also that will help with the perspective of not really knowing where they are because no one was, mm -hmm. it was, took a long time to even I mean the documents were awesome Mark that you set up like they were so great um, but it would help maybe have them communicate where they are kind of as a check-in basis maybe that's something we should have them do too like at the end of your day maybe like every day every two days because I I don't, don't want to like do a check-in almost kind of yeah, like, where are right, you well, like and, hey what are you working on um do you have any like you know it's almost like a agile status right I don't well know if that wants to encourage like certain people that they think, think they need to deliver something every day but it's more of just a gentle hey we're in the channel um what are you working on if we notice someone is working on something for a long time like just reach out to them individually and ask if they have a question maybe that would help right it is such a short period and that maybe it just needed to happen. Maybe we needed to ask more for you. Maybe, maybe rather than blanket statement, hey, <laughs> any reviews? It, it's just more of a, what are you working on right now? Like, is there right. anything I can help with? And that would help us. If we talked to Zinev, is there any possibility of doing these things for two months instead of? The, the, the duration is absolutely a choice that they're making they chose 30 days for this one intentionally because they wanted to avoid collision with Google Summer of Code. Ah. And, and they were very wise to do that because if they'd told me we want to do two months, I'd have had to oh. say, I'm sorry, I cannot give you the month of May because I will, that's, I begin, we begin the mentoring for Google Summer of Code mid-May. Right. So, so they, they intentionally chose the month of April to avoid a collision with Google Summer of Code. Aha. Uh -huh. But oh, maybe you... next year they could start in March. Right, right. Could. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so maybe we can, that's a good way to get it in, right? It's like, hey, <laughs> please. <'Cause> even <laughs> we, could, we could have, we could have and should have done some things to get them going a little bit sooner. But you know, I think they were all just getting to the point where they were comfortable enough with what they were doing that they could have had some real fun with the project. Uh, you know, so it's like right. a new job. There's those first things that you do and everybody else says, oh, this looks great. And you're like, I don't have no idea what I'm doing. And then there's that right. point where it starts to make sense. Right. And I feel like we cut them off right at that point. And, yes. and that just the nature of the learning curve that maybe two months would be a better. So we really, we had that good third week. And then the fourth week, we're starting to do retrospectives and wind down. So we really ended up with only kind of one week. Now we might we did things differently we might have gotten two weeks out of that but that's still not a lot yeah so okay kristen i wanted to go back to your i i'm cap putting words in your mouth and i apologize for doing that but it's specific activities to encourage questions increase participation and break barriers what if we asked each participant to show something at every mentoring session Ooh. you must show me a screenshot of something or share your screen to show how you're doing this as a way to encourage them to interact with us. But even then, that, that may be too simple. They, they won't interact and they just show it and say they're done. And we ran into the hardware. I did on that, um, that disaster second meeting, I, was, I tried to have a couple of the ones show where they were and they couldn't, show, they couldn't share their screen. Their internet kept blowing out uh, on them. Okay, uh, all right. And then luckily, because I, 
I had stuff I could have showed what it what I we were talking about. I don't even remember what it was. I could have done it, but I really wanted one. And Onyenye jumped in and she did it and did a brilliant job of it. But I had a I also had a feeling the others rapidly started to get scared of Onyenye because they were. I think they had a little bit of a notion that they were competing with each other. And Onyenye oh, was oh oh no was such as I mean she was such a rock star out the gate, right. and then about you know a, a little bit later Cynthia was catching up to her um but but yeah there's back to the is there anything we can do you know well we can't do anything about their internet i'm sure whether we could get them better hardware not 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 effectively right telling telling she code africa hey in addition to the 500 that you're giving them for this one month of work you also need to provide them equipment that they i i don't think there's any way it would work right there's right. they're just not going to be able to do it they right. they pre-qualify them to assure they have adequate equipment and in this case the adequate equipment worked okay but adequate internet is you know is hey it's thing. spotty internet it's it's the internet yeah and uh so meg back to the back to the show something if we had um if we had show a screenshot from each participant that could be done by the mentor without putting a demand on the participants internet bandwidth right if we just right. go into their participant document and say hey um, Cynthia here's what we see as your most recent screenshot tell us about that right and that might that's work. a good idea yeah I was going to say they could post them to Slack just before the meeting, but that's better. It's in the doc. Good too. Just yeah. anything to kind of encourage a little bit of, or if you're stuck and can't make progress, maybe before the meet, you know, before the meeting to start asking some questions. Right. 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 And and the idea is let's motivate, let's encourage that. Hey, we we're all going to encounter problems, and everybody's right. we're going to have many of the problems will be different, unique to you, and we talk. Okay. Right. I, well, and I wonder if that, maybe we do it two steps. We take Cynthia's idea, an icebreaker. Hi, I'm Cynthia. Here's a little bit about me. And here's my screenshot and the problems I had. And then we go to the next one. Hi, I'm so-and-so. And here's my thing. Right. So we could do a mix of them where we say, uh, combine one and the other. Maybe that will also help them feel less like they're competing with each other as well. I think that that's a really good point. Right. Yeah. We didn't really want them to feel like they were to. We wanted them to help each other, or like you feel like they could help each other a little bit more. But it's harder when um, it was there was not as much chatter. Constantly. Right. Yeah. Okay. I wonder. Actually, and they like Slack so well. It's hokey, and I don't do it, but. I wonder if we had something like the honeypot in, in Slack for them to thank each other when they helped each other, if that would oh, engender oh. anything. Yeah, that's. <laughs> and as I'm too old and jaded, I don't get excited about it. And every once in a while I feel guilty and go out and give some people some thanks, but. Yeah, and I'm not sure if the honeypot app is installed on the CDF Slack. It's a. Uh, a I don't 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 know enough about it to the yes. Well, I think the honeypot, like the honeypot, honeypot is very like a cloud beast thing. But I mean, there's nothing that says there's not a, a thanks or <laughs> some. Oh, okay. Some, so some that is that is made. not a general. That's not a general. Yeah, there's like, like there was something else that we were using, and and there was a right. problem with it or something. So we went out and did our own. Right. But there right. was a generic one, and it would, but even just. You know, even a separate channel for thanks, you know, would, would just something. Um, good. Okay. Very good idea. Excellent. All right. All of this sums together. I, the, one of the things I think that we fell down on is we didn't have enough peer to peer activity. Right. It yep. was, it was mentor to mentory and back and forth. Um, Well, and, and that one echoes with Onyinye and Cynthia both commenting, 
hey, they wanted to talk with a, a broader set of people in the Jenkins community. You know, had we pre-registered or pre-subscribed plugin maintainers, we might have already achieved that one. So, so right. that that one may be achieved just by okay, if we're gonna if we're gonna invite you to work on a plugin, we need to be sure that the maintainer is agreed to assist us during this one month. Right. Yeah, the, and and I confess the reason I didn't bother to subscribe the plugin maintainers was I falsely assumed that hey, this is just documentation. They'll of course accept it and immediately merge it, and that right. was I was just wrong. That 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 was not it at all. And even if they did, that's from the writer standpoint, um, we didn't have the research support, and that's right. what we really because, I mean, let's face it, you and Oleg and. Angelique and Kristen could look at most of these PRs and make a reasonably good guess as to whether or not they were accurate and okay to merge. Right. Um, but if they wanted to know what this argument meant and it wasn't written any place, you were kind of, ho you didn't have that background. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like that. I, the only like positive, I guess, about um, how I felt like it was taking a long time is that, you know, it's maybe just kind of showing that open source does take a little while. <laughs> and everything isn't immediate um, right but yeah but it's not a great experience for, <laughs> for a month-long project okay and we had thought that they we were thinking they would post together too with questions right. and i think that would just scared them too much they were and a little bit scared asking us questions until almost the end well and i think that's acknowledging that the slack channel did work better yes uh, even there, there were some flaws, right? We had one of the one of the participants that didn't actually get subscribed to the channel until two days before the project ended. Right. And so, yeah, oops, that's a that's an easy checklist item to be sure. Everybody at the start posts something to the the, the communication channel to confirm that we know they know how to talk to us. Right. Okay. Any, any other insights to share on the retrospective? All right, well, thanks. Excellent feedback. Um, let's see, let's put a hyperlink to the, well, lots of things there that need to be digested, summarized, et cetera. Yeah. Are we gonna get feedback from Zainab? Because I have a hunch that there that there are feelings out there that these people are still aren't telling us that they might tell her about things that they that didn't and, go well and i'm sure that that they i am confident that she code africa will tell us what uh the comments were from the participants absolutely yeah. there's no question there uh i think they're still processing it and mm -hmm. and i'm not uh, not confident we'll have it before the retrospective happens. Right. Okay, let me find the link to the poll. Just actually each of you, Kristen and Meg, you should have received the email that invited you to respond to the poll. We did, I saw it just a few, a little while ago. Okay, good. All right. Okay, anything, uh, she Code Africa, contribute on I need a blog post I got to remove it from the jumbotron and I've got the idea to propose a talk for DevOps world yes and you've even got some of our people who are going to join you right awesome next topic was contributor summit so June 25 be sure you're registered for contributor summit yes this is the page you go to yes you kick the click the big red button register here <laughs> <laughs> and uh, proposed coordination Google Doc is right here, and it's got a segment in it for the documentation track. All right. And so I had put into this Google season of docs. Now it'll have to be, yeah, it's got Jenkins and Kubernetes. We've already talked about that here. Onboarding improvements and content improvements were topics I had. If you've got other topics you'd like, please propose them as suggestions to this document. Okay. 
And I think that's that's about it. Any other topics we want to discuss before we call it a end of the session? All right. I'll post the the recording after this after the processing is complete. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Take care. Thank Thanks. See you. <laughs>